Hi folks, let's talk about one of the simplest and fastest and easiest ways to make a story map, a multimedia ArcGIS Online story map from a set of photographs. It may not be the flashiest and the most powerful, but I often use it in instruction because it's simple, direct, and provides instant gratification. So as you can see, I go to my ArcGIS Online organizational account. I click the 3x3 three three buttons there, and I get a story map. And once I'm in my story map, I've got to find my photographs. So I'm going to go to where I've parked some photographs. You can use a variety of different places. I'm using Flickr right here, which I don't use all that often, but here it's going to be very instructive for a variety of reasons. I'm going to make a story map of trees of Australia. Good on you, mates. Some beautiful trees that I've photographed during one of my work trips to promote GIS there. I've stored them in Flickr and I can download them to my local device. You can also use them online, as I'll explain toward the end of this video. But for now, I'm going to use the method where I'm actually downloading each one of these to my local device. It's a little bit annoying because Flickr does have these ads now, and so every once in a while you've got to delete one of those ads or skip by the ad. It's also important to keep in mind what size of image you're using for your story maps. If you've got a hundred photographs in your story map and they're all 10 megabytes in size just because your device allows you to take those photographs doesn't mean you necessarily need to have that full resolution image in your story maps it's just going to make your end user experience sluggish shall we just say sluggish so in Flickr one of the reasons why I do like Flickr is because it gives you options for the different size right online you don't have to take them into your photo editing program and edit the size you can actually say you know I only want a 200 by 200 or a 400 by 400 pixel etc so I'm downloading every one of these Flickr images and I'm gonna view all sizes and look I'm, I'm taking the medium one the medium resolution 480 by 480 that's gonna be just fine for my purposes here I'm gonna label those or name those photographs appropriately it's really important when you're working in a GIS environment because you've got so many different kinds of files shape files streaming data services, images, vectors, and much more. It's important to be thoughtful about what you name things. Simply calling them photo one, photo two, photo three is not going to make your life very easy in the future. So make life easier on yourself. GIS is already fairly complicated. So you need to simplify where possible. And in this case, I'm going to name my photos appropriately. Look at these photographs. They're wonderful. The diversity of trees in Australia is fabulous. Geography is one of the main, main reasons why I love using these tools. And look at that um, Banksia tree in Sydney. It looks like those big fuzzy microphones in recording studios is what reminds me of. So I've got uh, my local device here and I'm storing these photographs in a folder on my local device and naming them appropriately. Again, we don't have to save them locally. You can use them online with a link, as I'll explain later on. But I'm doing this in two phases so we can pick apart the methodology locally and then with the online URLs. Either way is fine. These tools live online. The story maps are all online. So it makes sense that you can use online tools. But sometimes it's nice to be able to just upload things from your local device. So now I'm going to, as you can see here, make a folder for all of my Australia trees and once I do that I'm going to be able to use them easily and now I've got a folder with those five photographs and the reason why I'm using the map tour story map in this case is because it, it, it very easily allows me to point to those photographs as you'll see in a moment and then map them so now I'm going to give my folder a name, a suitable name, and check and copy, cut these photographs to my folder, and now I've got all those photographs right there. Great. Now that's done. I've got my photos downloaded, and they're on my local device, and they're in a folder that makes sense, and I'm going to give my story map some character. I could talk about the diversity of the trees, and the height, and the species, and the condition of these trees and much more. I could also, of course, put layers on the map that indicate biomes and ecoregions and precipitation and so on. But keep, to keep things simple, I'm going to just do a straight base map. I'm going to change the base map here in a bit, but I'm going to make a very simple story map. I'm going to point 
to each one of my uh, photos and decide what suitable cover image I want. I kind of like that eucalyptus there in Canberra, so I'm going to take that one it's on the campus of the Australian National University. And I've got some a subtitle here, and I'm going to populate that subtitle. I've got a title, a subtitle, a cover image, and I'm all set to add a map with my photographs in the correct locations. All right. Remember, there are many ways to make story maps. This is just one way. It's a fast way to do it, and it, I think it, uh, it fosters some GIS skills, some organizational skills, some data skills. So I'm going to create a map tour. I'm going to upload photos. I'm going to pick that middle box there, upload photos. OK, browse your files. That makes sense. Look, I've got all these photographs sitting in a folder, so I can go ahead and click on, click on each one of those. I can change the order if I want. I just go ahead and say add the five photographs there. I'm going to select a explorer style and I'm going to give it, I don't have very many, I only have five so I'm going to indicate list. If I had a lot I'd probably use grid but I'm going to say list here. Great, now I've got the little thumbnails on the left side which is very nice and a sort of a carousel along the bottom. Now these are not geotagged yet, so one of the things that uh, I've talked about in other videos, and so do my colleagues, is how to upload photos that are already geotagged so you don't have to mess around with adding locations manually. See those other videos for those workflows. In this case, I want to add each one of the locations manually and also add an appropriate title. Now this is not the tree in Brisbane, so I've got to figure out, again, you've got to be organized about your metadata for each one of these things even if it's as simple as the metadata for the photograph so I'm gonna go back to that first photo on Flickr and see which which one that was now I was there so I know what it was but I want you to be thoughtful about choosing the appropriate and correct title for each one of these so this is truly the palm tree in Perth okay so I'm going to go ahead and name that appropriately and then uh, that's great so okay what about these other ones I'm going to name those appropriately based on the metadata in this case my Flickr photograph titles you can see I'm gonna do this five times I've got my point uh, point Siana in uh, Brisbane that's the third one in my list so that looks good and then I am going to my fourth photograph here that's that wonderful Banksia tree in Sydney I love that one and the fifth one is a very large fern on a certain type of tree in, in Melbourne okay rough tree fern tree in Melbourne alright I've never seen ferns that large before that is just fascinating okay so now we've got our titles we could again have a description in there if we wanted to with some additional information to keep things simple we're gonna just have the title and okay now I've got the task of adding the locations correct we've got our story map shell it's a map tour we've got the basics done our title our cover image and now we're going to go ahead and add the locations I know these are all in Australia so I don't want a global map here right I want to be able to zoom in I can put some alternative text in here if I wanted to I can change the base map here which I think I will and also the location of the default viewer experience so I'm gonna go ahead and change the base map I could use topographic map satellite image map I think I'm gonna pick modern antique just for fun and it does show a little bit of uh, the terrain so I'm gonna go ahead and pick that so modern antique and then I'm gonna go ahead and zoom into my study area which as you know is in Australia so wonderful I'm gonna center that there and zoom and pan so I get the scale just like I want it and now I'm going to go ahead and add the locations that's my next task Okay, so we've got a title, an Im a cover image, the photographs loaded, and I'm going to go ahead and I can click to add a tour point, or I could actually search by location. I know it's in Perth, so I'm going to go ahead and add that. Now, obviously, there are different requirements for spatial accuracy. Here, I just want students to know where, in what city, uh, this particular tree was. It's in Perth. It's not exactly at that location, but here in Canberra, I'm going to go ahead and say Canberra again put that on the city so they know where it is and then I can have them think about okay what's the rainfall what's the precipitation like what is the frost free days why do certain plants grow why do certain trees grow in certain parts of the world so think about the spatial relationships it's never just about mapping things right folks it's 
always about the spatial relationships. Now I'm going to go ahead to my tree in Brisbane and there it is. So just like before I could manually put the point where I want it to or I can do a geocoding by address. I could have latitude longitude here. Here I'm just going to keep things simple and put city name and add it to the map. Great. Three of them are done out of five and I'm going to change things up a little bit. I'm going to use the current zoom level there again like I've done for the other two but for this fourth one I'm going to change this up a little bit so you can see some of the additional functionality but without getting too deep here. Additional functionality. Let's go ahead and do the following. Okay, number three is in Brisbane. Number four is right there. But I don't really uh, want to put it on the default location for, for uh, Sydney. I actually know where I took all these photographs because I was there when it happened. So I'm going to go ahead to ArcGIS Online and actually in a separate uh, tab and go to the place and get the latitude and longitude of exactly where I took that photograph. Now again, remember, you can have these all geocoded ahead of time. But many reasons, many valid reasons, you might not have a lat long on your photograph. So I'm going to go ahead and find the location where I took that photograph. And then I'm going to use ArcGIS Online to determine with the location tools over here in the lower right. I can figure out where that is in terms of latitude and longitude. Notice that there's a couple of tools in the lower right there. And one of them is it gives you the location. So if I pan over to the map, one of the location formats is latitude, longitude, decimal degrees. So all I have to do is figure out, okay, 150.8, etc. Now I can go ahead and type those coordinates in to my current story map construction zone. Oops, I've I've I put two periods there, so it's not going to like that. Ooh, that's a good instructive moment. Not able to find this place. Why? Because I've got two decimal places. 150 east longitude, 33. 0.8 south latitude. That's exactly where I took that photograph of that tree. So I'm going to go ahead and put that for the location in Sydney rather than just the default location for city or Sydney uh, Central. Okay, now we've done a good job here in adding our four locations. Let's go ahead and go to the one in Melbourne, but it's not actually in Melbourne. In this case, I'm not going to put a lat long in. I'm just going to go to the place on the map and go to the location where I was, which is over here in this state forest, and click there. So now I've shown you several different ways to get those points on a map. All right, that's looking good. I've got all five locations now for my trees in Australia. Nice. Just going to go ahead and test that. It's always a good idea to test that. Your maps, I can change the order as you can see if I want to, but that's looking good, and I can go ahead and save this, share this. Notice in story map zone oftentimes you have an auto save and that's true with a lot of ArcGIS tools. Not all of them so if it's not auto saving make sure you save often just in case something happens to your web connection and so on. I'm going to share this with my ArcGIS online organization and then I'm going to go ahead and publish it and then test it. Hey hey we've done a great job here. Trees of Australia. Oh it's a beautiful thing. Palm tree in Perth. There it is. The eucalyptus in Canberra. Poinciana, Regina, oh my gosh, beautiful, in Sydney, or I'm sorry, in Brisbane, Banksia tree in Sydney, and then we've got the rough fern, the rough tree, the fern tree in Melbourne. Nice. Okay, I'm liking that a whole lot. I can make some adi additional ad adjustments here if I want to, but that is a map tour quick way of mapping points uh, in your story map where you know the locations. Now, I promised you that later on in this video, and now we're, we've come to this point, where if I didn't want to download all those photographs from my, in this case, Flickr library, I can actually use the online method. So how do I do that? Remember, I have these up in Flickr. If I go to one of these photographs and say replace image and go to link, ooh, what link could I put there? It's my link to my actual photograph online. Now, when you're using online photo links, Make sure you're pointing to the exact image itself, not something embedded or in a web page or something. So in this case, again, this is why I like Flickr. If I go to this view all sizes, 
I get the actual URL if I go to medium 640 by if I right click there and say copy image address I always like to test it so go to another tab in your web browser and just test and make sure you can pull up that image with that URL so if it works great looks dot JPEG in this case and now that particular location is pointing to the online version there's there's pros and cons so the point is folks a couple different methods to map your photographs in this map tour methodology thanks for being with me